Yeah. Okay, welcome everyone. We've just prayed. Uh, is there a favorite song that you want us to sing, Sister Fran? So I should give over no, to it's you. Not a favorite. It's not a favorite. Okay, thank you. It's not a favorite, but it fits in with what we're talking about. So let's go to him, Marvelous Grace. 109 in my hymn book. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Blessed grace of our loving Lord. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Have we found it? Yes, yes, thank okay. you. Can we, can we, there's three verses. I don't know if everyone can take a verse each or not. Yeah, with, with three of us. <laughs> okay, so I don't know the song, sister, so okay. I'll take the, the okay, last okay. verse. Okay, I will yeah. start. Marvelous grace of our loving Lord, grace that exceeds our sins and our guilt, yonder on Calvary's mount outpoured, there where the blood of the Lamb was spilled. Grace, grace, God's grace, grace that will pardon and cleanse within. Grace, grace, God's grace, grace that is greater than all our sin. Sun and despair like the sea waves cold threaten the soul with infinite loss. Grace that is greater than yet. Sorry, great Grace that is greater, yes, grace untold, points to the refuge and mighty cross. Grace, grace, God's grace, grace that will pardon and cleanse within. Grace, grace, God's grace, grace that is greater than all our sin. Excuse me if I if I sing uh, uh, with Discord. Marvelous, right. infinite, matchless grace, freely bestowed on all who believe. You you that are longing to see His face, will you this moment His grace receive? Grace, grace, God's grace. Grace that will pardon and cleanse within. Grace, grace, God's grace. Great grace that is greater than all our sin. Amen. 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 It comes from the heart. That's all that matters. That's true. Now, we are going back to chapter 7 of Chapter 7 of Steps to Christ. Um, we have already read some of the paragraphs, but I'm going to, what I'm going to do to start is um, just um, briefly say what those paragraphs entailed before I start reading again. Now, the chapter started by talking about the Holy Spirit brings forth conversion and a change in character and habit and pursuits. Um, then it goes on to say there can, there can be an outward change without being an inward change. The fruit of the Spirit will be exhibit if this change has taken place. Then it says, we know who has, who has the heart by the um, character that we portray. But this change has to work a reformation. And Jesus is our example of this. He showed love 
at all time. This was the principal action of Jesus. Now I will go on to read. I'm going to read about four paragraphs and then we, if you've got a pen, take down notes of what your thoughts are and then we will come back and talk about these paragraphs. So let me start. There are two errors against which the children of God, particularly those who have just come to trust in his grace, especially need to guard. So there are two errors we need to guard. The first already dwelt upon is that of looking to your own works, trusting to anything they can do to bring themselves into harmony with God. He who is trying to become holy by his own works in keeping the law is attempting an impossibility. It can't be done. All that man can do without Christ is polluted with selfishness and sin. It is the grace of Christ alone through faith that can make us holy. The opposite and no less dangerous error is that belief in Christ releases men from keeping the law of God. That since by faith alone we become partakers of the grace of Christ, our works have nothing to do with our redemption. Now, this is a second dangerous error. But notice here that obedience is not a mere outward compliance, but the service of love. The law of Christ is an expression of his very nature. It is an embodiment of the great principle of love and hence is the foundation of his government in heaven and earth. If our hearts are renewed in the likeness of God, if the divine love is implemented in the soul, will not the law of God be carried out in the life? When the principle of love is implanted in the heart, when man is renewed after the image of him that created him, the new covenant promise is fulfilled. I will put my law into their hearts and in their minds will I write them. Hebrews 10, 6. And if the law is written in the heart, will it not shape the life? Obedience, the service and allegiance of love is a true sign of discipleship. Let me say that again. Obedience, the service and allegiance of love is the true sign of discipleship. Thus, the scripture says, this is the love of God that we keep his commandments. He that saith, I know him and keepeth not his commandments is a liar and the truth is not in him. 1 John 5, 3 and 1 John 2, 4. Instead of releasing man from obedience, it is faith and faith only that makes us partakers of the grace of Christ, which enables us to render obedience. We do not earn salvation by obedience. I'll read that again. We do not earn salvation by our obedience. For salvation is the gift of God to be received by faith. But obedience is the fruit of faith. You know that he was manifest to take away our sins and him in him is no sin. Whosoever abideth in him sinneth not. Wow. Whosoever abideth in him sinneth not. Whosoever sinneth hath not seen him, neither know him. 1 John 3, 5 and 6. Here is the true test. If we abide in Christ, if the love of God abides in us, our feelings, our thoughts, our purposes, our actions will be in harmony with the will of God as expressed in the precepts of his holy law. Little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. 1 John 3, 7. Righteousness is defined by the standard of God's holy law as expressed in the 10 precepts given on Sinai. 
and I will stop there. There was a lot said in those paragraphs. Has anybody got anything they want to share? Yeah, I was going to say, um, as the, the first paragraph that you read starts uh, to say about uh, that there's the two errors mm -hmm. that, um, which are against God, which the, uh, and, and then the first one uh, we had already looked at, it's looking at our own works and trusting what we can do and try to bring in them into harmony with God, but it doesn't work that way. God mm -hmm. is the one that works in us. Mm -hmm. we, 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 we just have to be obedient to, 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 to God's calling. But sometimes we, we do things and we think, oh, well, I've done this, I'm good. So many times I've come across people that say, oh, I'm not a sinner. I've, I've done good. I'm doing good. I, I look after people. Um, you know, I care about other people and this. And then, you know, when you when you think about it, it's always I, I, I. Mm -hmm. And you think, well, are you listening to yourself? Because you're talking about I and not God. You don't say anything about that God is working through you to to think. So th this is how I think um, mm. uh, uh, most of us, we go wrong. We think it's our our own doing because I'm, I'm doing good. That means I don't, I'm not sinning, you know, but the, yeah. the God reads the heart and he knows what's going on in our heart. Why are we doing that goodness? Is it because we want sort of like brownie points or we want to compare ourselves with somebody else that's doing something else or we want you know a lot of things that um, we can do good for but not really in harmony with, uh, with, 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 with God what God wants us to do um, yeah. mm. I'll add my voice to this um, I think Believing that you have to do something to get something is a natural state of man. Isn't this how the world operates? If I want something, I have to do something. Mm. It's, 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 it's strange to a, a, a carnal mind. It's strange to say you don't have to do nothing. It's all about just, just believe and accept. And so it's not because I think we think we can earn it. I think it's because it's a natural state of man that something has to be done to get something, even though God tells us that's not the case. Mm -hmm. And it won't bring us in harmony with God. And we know as Christians, it is the grace of Christ through faith that makes us holy it's the verse that it says we have to be holy and it releases us from <laughs> it releases us from the law but that doesn't mean we don't keep the law <laughs> it's a phenomenon really um mm. obedience comes through love the law is god's character it says and his nature and the principle of love the foundation of heaven. If we love Christ, we will keep his law. So it's not about keeping his law for God to, because the second the second error is that um, believe Christ releases men from keeping the law of God. So it's not about keeping the law to have to be converted. It's about being converted and you will keep the law. Mm. Mm. <laughs> so, you know, it, it's around, about, it's, a, it, 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 it's something to get your head around, I think. And if you talk about this to a carnal man or a man who's not a Christian, it is difficult to understand. Because even there are other churches who say, um, we don't have to keep the law. Um, is it, they say it's grace. It's all about grace. So even those who said they've accepted Christ are finding it difficult to understand. Has anybody else got anything to say? 
Yes. Um, it's just adding on what both of you have, have said. I'm one of those people that being new in the faith and um, coming to work to go through the word from Genesis to Revelation, which I've never done in my life because the place where I'm coming from never, never encouraged it. Uh, mm -hmm. exactly what you're saying, what this, what this is saying that, um, I thought I was fine. I went to church and I did everything that, that, that the church said I must do from, from a Catholic church, mm -hmm. by the way. And I even did more like fasting during Lent and everything. So it was fine. I thought I was fine. But now coming to this truth that the Seventh Day Adventist um, uh, uh, subscribes to, I struggled. But now, how? What is it? Uh, this grace now, uh, uh, the grace and 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 uh, you, you you are saved by grace and not by works. But but I think now I am understanding. I'm understanding it that. Yes, it is grace that says us uh, in our own in our own power and strength. There is nothing that we can do to please God, and yeah. but uh, our works are a result of our of us having surrendered our will to the Lord. So our works actually should uh, are will be the fruit of our obedience to yeah. to the Lord, mm -hmm. of our surrendering, allowing the Lord to work in us. So uh, thank you very much for this reading. And um, I'm learning a lot from just going through all these readings in the mornings and now in the afternoons. Um, yes, uh, but the temptation to still want to to do works you know that old man the 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 one who who wants to exalt self is always uh -huh. in the wind waiting wanting to 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 be the one that's on the forefront so it's a lot of prayer that we need to 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 be involved in here to continuously asking for the holy spirit to break down this old man and and, and give us that humility to allow the Holy Spirit and even invite him to work through us so that we stay on the straight and narrow path. Thank you very much. Um, can I say, this is where love comes in. You talked about humility, sister. And this is where the love from God comes in because within that love is should be humility. Um, now, what is the way that we, the only way we are told we can please God? There's a text that tells us, um, I'm trying to think, it, it's to do with faith. We can only come to God through faith, can't we? But what is the text? What, how, what's the, how does the text go now? Um, it says it is impossible to, uh, to please God please. without faith. That's the one I want, sister. That would come to mind. So faith comes into this. We have to have faith in God to please it. And this will enable us then to understand that it's not the works. It's not the works. If you love God, if you love me, the text, you should keep my commandments. Mm. Mm. So it's an it's an expression of love, isn't it? Mm. Keeping the commandments is an expression of love, but those commandments will not save us. The, it, they say the commandments is like a mirror. Why is it like a mirror? Can somebody tell me? Well, I mean, the, the mirror shows you 
what's on your face or how you're dressed and all that, then then you've got to change. But the mirror doesn't change you. Oh, there you go. So the Ten Commandments is not going to change you. It just shows you where what you're not where, doing or what you, you should be wrong. doing. Hmm. And if you love me, God says, you'll keep my commandments because that shows me that you love me. And the reason why you will do that too is because it's my nature. It's my character. And by hmm. doing that, you're taking, we're taking on the character of Christ himself. Hmm. And it brings about obedience out of love. Now, yeah. we talked about... Um, you know, without without faith, you can't please God. Now, within faith, there are components. And love is the top, at the top, isn't it? It's at the top. That's where love is. But if, any, if mm -hmm. nobody, if you, does anybody else have anything to say before we move on? Um, well, yeah, I was going to say this other paragraph says, but notice here that obedience is not a mere outward compliance, but the service of love, as we oh, talk right. about God's love. Because yeah. God first loved us before we loved him. So it, mm -hmm. it was that step forward of loving us. So if I love God, I will do his service. I will keep his commandments. And it's just not outside that I'll, you know, like in front of people and I'll, and I'll be doing things, but it's in inward as well that I must be willing to do that work for Christ, because God has commissioned us to do the to do His work. When He was here on earth, He He lived to show us how yeah. to how to how to live, and also He never really did anything for Himself. So I and I think that's 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 the only thing that we can do is showing God's character that we mustn't live for for self we must live for other people mm -hmm. you know and then that shows us the true love because God is the one that also sees our heart we may say oh I love my brother and my sister but then and then I'm like talking behind them that's not really love mm -hmm. and God has already seen that in me that I'm you know, outside, I'll say to people, yeah, I uh, I love, you know, this and that and all. But then am I really telling the truth? I'm just deceiving myself because I can't deceive God. God already knows. So it's me that's being deceived by myself. I bring this uh, uh, um, upon myself. But yes. I need to be, and also to be truthful to myself because God reads and somebody else, I mean, I can say to Sister Fran, oh, this and that and all that. And she won't know whether I'm telling her. She'll take me at my word. She won't know whether I'm telling the truth or not. So I'm not deceiving her. I'm deceiving myself because I'm not telling her the truth, if yeah. that makes any sense. It does. It does. And, you know, I'm a very practical person. And um, what I will say is that it's not that easy as we say it's not my sister said it's about surrendering and even that in itself is done by faith we can't see god he hasn't spoken to us verbally that we can hear it is through his word he speaks to us and we and we have to accept the word by faith everything is by faith so although we we, we say these things for all of us it is not that easy it's about living a daily life surrendered to god and as we do that we become stronger and stronger and stronger in the faith and one um sentence in here says little children let no man deceive you he that doeth righteousness is righteous even as he is righteous and if we go to 1 John 3, 5, it says, whoever abides in him does not sin. Wow. Don't you find that fascinating? I do. Because I'm saying to myself, so when I do sin and I have a thought I shouldn't have, I'm not abiding in him. 
That's what, what the verse says. Whoever abides in him does not sin. What is God telling us? That we are capable of not sinning. Whoever sins has neither seen him or know him. Do we know, do we know God? He says, and this is life eternal, that thou should know me, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom I have sent. We need to know God. Little children, let no one deceive you. Who, he who practices righteousness is righteous, just as he is righteous. I'll leave it at that. It's a lot to think about. If we tell people, listen, you can stop sinning, you know. You can stop doing wrong. They say, oh, no, no. Uh, you know, the smoker. Oh, you can stop smoking. Oh, I no, I don't, I don't think I can. I need it. Um, the person who drinks, the person who who commits adultery all the time, and they in them, and they're right in themselves. They can't do it, and it is something supernatural, something supernatural that God does for us. But we can move on um, to more of the reading. Would anybody like to read, please? I'd like you to read. Whoever's going to read. You need to start from that so-called faith in Christ. And I want you to read one, two, three paragraphs um, that, that ends with you, if you had not sinned. Is there anybody to read, please? Hello? I can read this. Okay, so we're starting from that so-called faith in Christ. Okay, let me just say a quick prayer for the for the airways, Lord. Please hold the airways so that my sisters right. can hear as I mm -hmm. am reading. Amen. That so-called faith in Christ, which professes to release men from the obligation of obedience to God, is not faith, but presumption. By grace are ye saved through faith. But faith, if it hath not works, is dead. Ephesians 2, verse 8. In James 2, 17, Jesus said of himself before he came to earth, I delight to do thy will, O oh my God. Yea, the law is within my heart. Psalm 40, verse 8. And just before he ascended again to heaven, he declared, I have kept my father's commandments and abide in his love. John 15, 10, scripture says, Hereby do we know that we know him, if we keep his commandments. He that saith he abideth in him, ought himself also to walk even as he walked. 1 John 2, verses 3 to 6. Because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that ye should follow his steps. 1 Peter 2, verse 21. The condition of eternal life is now just what it always has been, just what it was in paradise before the fall of our first parents, perfect obedience to the law of God, perfect righteousness. If eternal life were granted on any condition short of this, then the happiness of the whole universe would be imperiled. The way would be open for sin with all its train of war and misery to be immortalized. It was possible for Adam before the fall to form a righteous character by obedience to God's law, but he failed to do this. And because of his sin, our natures are fallen. We cannot make ourselves righteous. Since we are sinful and holy, we cannot perfectly obey the holy law. We have no righteous of our own with which to meet the claims of the law of God. But Christ has made a way of escape for us. He lived on earth amid trials and temptations such as we have to meet. He lived a sinless life, died, he died for us, and now he offers to take our sins and 
give us his righteousness. If you give yourself to him and accept him as your savior, then sinful as you are, life may have been for, sorry, then sinful as your life may have been, for his sake, you are accounted righteous. Christ's character stands in place of your character and you are accepted before God just as if you had not sinned. Okay, yes. we'll stop for there. Thank you very much, sister. Thank you for reading that. Thank you so much. I've got a few questions to ask now to help us to think. What is presumption? It says that we... we we presume, um, I'm trying to find where it says that. Um, so what is, when we, when, we, when we presume, what does that mean? Anybody? Um, wh what was the question? Sorry, Sister Friend. What what does it mean to be, to presume to have presumption? Because it, we it talks about presumption. I'm just trying to find the place, but um, it's, it says it's that, we that first uh, sentence. Well, that's the thing that I I really don't know can't understand or explain it to say presumption. Um, because here it says, that so-called faith in Christ, which yeah. professes to release men from the obligation of obedience to God, is not faith, but presumption. Um, I can't so, find it. Is it in the second paragraph? No, the first one after she read, after Sinai. Oh, I see. I see. Yes, the, the, yes, the first yes, sentence, yes. yeah. Yes, I'm looking, so, I'm looking at the wrong place. Yes. yes. So, well, that's my question as well. I can't really... I, I, I can't really understand what presumption really means. You okay. this time, I've yes. Google. Yeah, I've, I've consulted our friend Google. Okay, yes. <laughs> you want me to read? <laughs> yes. yes. Uh, so, um, presumption is a noun. It's an idea that is taken to be true on the basis of probability. Oh. Underlying presum presumption about human nature. And then the second one, he says, behavior perceived as arrogant, disrespectful, and transgressing the limits of what is permitted or appropriate. For example, he lifted her off the ground and she was enraged at his presumption. Okay. So he so says similar yeah. is brazenness and audacity okay so let me read that sentence again that so called faith so remember it says so called faith when you say something is so called that means it's not real that so called faith in christ which professes to release men from the obligation of obedience is not faith but presumption so those who say that they're released from keeping the commandments of God are being presumptuous. They're being disobedient. They are, they're actually saying that God gives them permission to do what they're doing. It's take, presumption is also taking liberties. You know, when you take liberties, you haven't asked the person if you can do something, you just jump and do it. Do you, do you, do you agree with me? Hello? Yes. 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 We're taking liberties, we would say, in our days now, wouldn't we? Um, who told you you could take that? That belongs to me. Or who told you, if you even in a, in a workplace, that you can do that? You know the rules and regulations, don't you? You're taking liberties. In other words, you think you're free. You're free to do as you like. That is what presumption is all about. Going against what you've been told to do. I think that sums it up, doesn't it? Going against what you've been told to do. 
and you think you can do your own thing. Would you agree with me? Yes. Okay. Yes. Now, the next question, do we delight to do God's will? Because it says Jesus delighted to do God's will, to do his father's will. What does delight mean when you delight to do something? Well, that's, it's a pleasure. That you find it a pleasure to do God's will. Yeah. Uh, it's not a duty. No one forces you to do it. It's because oh. you love doing it. Yes. Absolutely. Anybody else want to add to that? Yeah, I was I was going to say the same thing as Sister Stolle mm -hmm. saying that mm -hmm. you you're happy to do it because it's mm -hmm. And then it's it's through the love that they make help makes you to to do something because, like I mean, like a like a, a child, sometimes uh, you ask the child to do something and they're happy to do it because they 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 want uh. to like please well not really please please you in a way to say oh not to say that they, you'll say oh good or and things like that they. But because the it, because they love they, their parents, yeah, yeah, because they love their parents, so you want to please your parents. So that's the same way that uh, we this delight is that because we love God, we're going to try and please Him, you know, um, as that um, which I, I can't remember which yeah. of us where it comes from when it when it says at the end of it. Um, you know, uh, God will say, uh, "Well done, you faithful servant." Is because mm -hmm. you we've been doing the His work and we His we ple His ple we pleased Him, sort of thing. Yeah. That's what I, that's how that's what I would do, say. Yeah, yeah. I, I was going to say the same thing about a parents like you, Sister Oda. <laughs> if I want to please my parents, and I want to please them, why? Because I love them. That's why you want to please them. I mean, there are other ulterior motives that people can have for pleasing people because they want recognition, because they want them to give them something. But the genuine motive is because you love somebody. So you will you will delight, you will take pleasure because you want to please them because you love them. And that's just what and that's what God, what this um this book is saying isn't it that jesus delighted to do his father's will because he loved him and wanted to please him and apart from that he wanted to be our example did he not he wanted to be our example so how did jesus keep his father's commandment because he goes on to talk about that how jesus kept his father's commandment How be, how be, we do know that we know him. How by, we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. He that says to keep his commandment ought or himself also to walk even as he walked. And it says Christ um, also suffered for us, leaving us an example that you should follow his steps. So how did Jesus keep his father's commandments? Can I go, Sister Fran? Yes, absolutely. Um, it, There is somewhere in the scriptures, I can't remember which one, in the New, in the New Testament, one of the Gospels, where it says he had, he had the spirit of God without ah. limit. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that's what came to my mind. He was constantly led by, he allowed the Holy Spirit to lead him. It says, since we are sinful and holy, we cannot perfectly obey the law. We have no righteousness of our own with which to meet the claims of the law of God. But Christ had made a way of escape for us. He lived on earth amid trials and temptation such as we have to meet. 
whatever trials and temptations we have to meet, Jesus met them and he overcame. He lived a sinless life. He died for us and now he offers to take our sins and give us his righteousness. So he wants to take our sin, give us his righteousness. But the only way we can live, live a, sin, a sinless life is to allow the Holy Spirit, as my sister said, to have the part in our lives. Okay, Sister Rhoda, um, do you want us to go on and read more? Hello. Sister Rhoda, are you there? Um, yes, Sister Friend. Do you want us to go on and read some and read to the end now? Um, what do you think it's quoted to? Yes, I think we can. I mean, there's only well, I will read it. There's only one to you want three. us to finish. What time do you, do you want, want us to finish? Yeah. Well, we we can finish the the okay. the, the, the chapter. Okay. I'll you want it. me to read? Um, I'll read part and then you can read the last part, okay? Okay. All right, go. okay. When I okay. when I stop, you can pick up. So here right. we go. Okay. More than this, Christ changes the heart. Do you see that? It's God, Christ that changes the heart as long as we submit. He abides in your heart by faith. You are to maintain this connection with Christ by faith. And the continual surrender, wow, faith and surrender of your will to him. And so long as you do this, he will work in you to will and to do according to his good pleasure. So you may say, the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Galatians 2.20. So Jesus said to his disciples, it is not ye that speak, but the spirit of the father which speaketh in you. Amen. Matthew 10, 20. Then with Christ working in you, you will manifest the same spirit and do the same works, works of righteousness and obedience. So we have nothing in ourselves of which to boast. We have no grounds for self-exaltation. Our only grounds of hope is in the righteousness of Christ imputed to us. And in that wrought by his Holy his Spirit working in and through us. When we speak of faith, there is a distinction that should be borne in mind. There is a kind of belief that is wholly distinct from faith. The existence and power of God the truth of his words are facts that even Satan's and his oaths cannot at heart deny. The Bible says the devil also believe and tremble, but this is not faith. James 2.19, where there is not only a belief in God's word, but a submission of the will to him, where the heart is yielded to him, the affections fixed upon him, there is faith. Faith that works by love and purifies the soul. Through this faith, the heart is renewed in the image of God. And the heart that is, and the heart in its unrenewed state is not subject to the law of God, neither can be. Now, delight in its holy precepts exclaims with the psalmist, Oh, how love I the law. It is my meditation all day. Psalms 119, 97. And the righteousness of the law is fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. And Sister Rhoda, please continue. They are those who have known the pardoning love of Christ and who really desire to be children of God. Yet they realize that their character is imperfect their life faulty, and they are ready to doubt whether their hearts have been renewed by the Holy Spirit. To such I would say, do not draw back in despair. We shall often have to bow down and weep at the feet of Jesus because of our shortcomings and mistakes. 
but we are not to be discouraged. Even if we are overcome by the enemy, we are not cast off, not forsaken and rejected of God. No, Christ is at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us, said the beloved John. These things write I unto you, that ye sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. That's uh, taken from 1 John 2 verse 1. And do not forget the words of Christ. The Father himself loveth you. That's uh, uh, John 16 verse 27. He desires to restore you to himself, to see his own purity and holiness reflected in you. And if you will but yield yourself to him, he that hath begun a good work in you will carry it forward to the day of Jesus Christ. Pray more fervently, believe more fully. As we come to distrust our own power, let us trust the power of our Redeemer, and we shall praise him who is the health of our countenance. The closer you come to Jesus, the more faulty you will appear in your own eyes, for your vision will be clearer and your imperfections will be seen in broad and distinct contrast to his perfect nature. This is evidence that Satan's delusions have lost their power, that the, that the viving influence of the Spirit of God is arousing you. No deep-seated love for Jesus can dwell in the heart that does not realize its own sinfulness. The soul that is transformed by the grace of Christ will admire his divine character. But if we do not see our own moral, def moral deformity, it is unmistakable. It is an unmistakable evidence that we have not had a view of the beauty and excellence of Christ. The less we see to esteem in ourselves, the more we shall see to esteem in the infinite purity and loveliness of our Savior. A view of our sinfulness drives us to him who can pardon. And when the soul, realizing its helplessness, reaches out after Christ, he will reveal himself in power. The more our sense of need drives us to him and to the word of God, the more exalted views we shall have of his character and the more fully we shall reflect his image. Amen. 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 Any comments anybody would like to make about uh, the first part um, that I read before Sister Rose? Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, the thing that um, I can see is and just talking about faith. Hmm. Uh, to me, it's just a, a, a total surrender and trusting in Christ mm -hmm. that uh, that we can have a, 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 a closer walk with Him. And the more the more we reflect on Christ's character, the more that our character will be like Him. If we um, um, spend time in his word in also knowing what how much he done for us because when we know that he's done so much for me I will try my best by the help of the Holy Spirit because we can't do anything on our own but it's only through Christ that can help us through the Holy Spirit that can change us daily and it's a total um as I said, a total surrender daily, dying to okay. self. Okay. Um, you know, um, what came to my mind is that God has made many promises to us in the Bible. And we have to read the word every day because it is that's where our spiritual life comes from. It's the bread of life, isn't it? Now, I'm just going to quote three statements that um, this the first part that I read made. The life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So there we see we are living by faith. The next one. 
then with Christ working in us, we will manifest the same spirit and do the same works of righteousness and obedience that he did. And the last one, where, where there is not only a belief in God, but a submission of the will to him, where the heart is yielded to him, the affection fixed upon him, there is faith. All of these are about faith. Now, these are texts from the word of God. These are promises that God has made to us. Can you see them as promises? Hello? Yes, yes, it is the promises uh, of God, as it, as it says, the, the first one that you read, the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith. So it's the faith that in Christ mm -hmm. that that will lead us uh, to 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 change our our lives and also to be closer to Christ. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any any other comments before we close this? Yes, yes. Um, uh, the one that um, I'm in agreement with all the comments that uh, you ladies have, have, have put through. Uh, and then furthermore, I saw the one that I that I saw that uh, resonates with me is the is on the last page in the last two pages. The closer mm -hmm. you come to Jesus, the more fully you are, will appear, the more faulty you will appear in your eyes, for mm -hmm. your vision will be clearer and your imperfections will be seen in a broad and dis distinct contrast to his perfect nature. This is us looking to the cross for our standards, and not to the things of this world or created beings. Um, so I'm seeing that the more we look to the cross and the more we allow the Holy Spirit to change us, that humility that we are looking for will, will happen uh, automatically because we will see, oh no, you think you have spent so much time, but look, there is you, 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 you will see how faulty you are compared to Christ. Mm -hmm. That is why yeah. uh, 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 your sister Fran, when you say we need to stay in the word because that's where the promises are and that's where the standard that we need Amen. to follow, we find it mm -hmm. in. So, uh, and it reminds me, Sister Rhoda, when we were reading on not yesterday, the day before yesterday, uh, we were you you were saying, uh, sometimes I feel like a hypocrite because I don't see <laughs> any changes in myself. And 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 I see in the in the I think it's the third page from the end, it says here, there are those who have known the pardoning love of Christ and who really desire to be children of God, yet they realize their character is imperfect, their life faulty, and they are ready to doubt whether their hearts have been renewed by the Holy Spirit. To such, I would say, do not draw back in despair. Um because it is, it, it is, it is, what is it, like unto leaven, when it's working, it works quietly in, in your heart, within you, rather than uh, the hypocritical outward show of works, that works produces. Uh, but this one is the quiet one, where, where by the time it's done, people will see uh, the fruit of, of what what work it has been is is been making in your in you, uh, without you even realizing sometimes. But like you said the other day, yeah, sometimes you see there are things that you used to like that you don't you don't like anymore, and it's 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 that incremental change that we 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 want to to we are looking for, and also that. The one that the one that also that I caught my eye is the continual on the first page, Sister Fran, that you read the first paragraph, the continual of your of sur of co the continual surrender of your will to Him. So 
uh, walking with the Lord and uh, seeking the the Holy Spirit to be the the focal point of our life, the power that drives our whole being. We can't ask for it once a day. We can't ask for it twice a day. It's almost like every, if I have to make a decision right now, Lord, what will you have me do? Are you in this? Is it me or you that, that I am that I am saving kind of thing? So it's for me, it's, 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 it's a moment to moment asking for the Holy Spirit to guide and to rebuke, to teach because uh, of realizing that on my own, really, I'll just go back to to being in the flesh and, 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 and feeding the, the depraved appetites of the flesh. Thank you. Okay, thank you, sister. Um, my thought, my thoughts on this is um, if you were to be talking to an outsider who's not in the church and they hear all of us saying these things, they could become a little confused and say, well, there are contradictions there because you've told me to be righteous as thou art righteous and holy as thou art holy. But then, you know, you're telling me that um, I mustn't be presumptuous and depend on myself. That's fine. Um, so, but now you're saying to me, the closer I come to you, is the more false I'm going to stay in myself. That can sound like a contradiction to somebody who doesn't understand what we are saying. What we are saying is that we do slip sometimes. It's not presumptuous sin. You know you sin and say, oh, well, I know God will forgive me. It doesn't really matter. You'll forg I just have to go and ask forgiveness. That's it. No, no, no. But we can slip, can't we? We can slip. Um, and, th and that's the fault that we see in ourselves. When we slip, we don't sin presumptuously and just say, well, God will forgive me. And you do it again and God will forgive me. And you do it. No, 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 no. This is about slipping. When you slip, you don't purposely slip, do you? Do you purposely fall over? No, you don't. And God, Jesus is saying, you know, you will see these occurrences in your life. Right? As the nearer you come to me. But I can help you to overcome them. And it's, it's a gradual growth. When somebody joins us in the church, and they slip. We must bear with them because they are growing. It's like a baby falling and getting up again. And we must help them. So it's a growing process. And we call it sanctification, don't we? And what are we told about sanctification? It will be never ending until Jesus comes. <laughs> we live a sanctified life until Jesus comes. A growing, a growth is taking place. He will always be showing us where we can improve where we can do things better. And the beauty about this is that Jesus takes our sin and covers us with his righteousness. Nothing good that we have done. It's all about Jesus. Before we wind up, has anybody got anything to conclude on this point? Um, I am going to have to leave you in a minute because I have another appointment. But if anybody's got anything to say on this point before we wind up, we'll take that and then I will pray and then I'll have to go. The, the only one I wanted is the last sentence of the whole, um, the whole chapter is, the more our sense of need drives us to him, Mm -hmm. And to the word of God, the more exalted views we shall have of his character and the okay. more fully we shall reflect his image. Amen. 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 Can, I, can I pray now? Yes. Yes. Thank you, Sister Friend. Okay. Let us pray. Thank you so much for taking that chapter. Thank you. Pleasure. Father in heaven, we, your children, are here thanking you for your words of life, your words of beauty, your words of grace, your words of faith. We thank you, Lord, that you called us out of darkness into your marvelous light, 
if you had not called us, we would still be groping in sin. But because of your love for us and your compassion towards us, you've called us out, dear Father. We know that we need to have faith. We need to believe. But even the devils believe and tremble, we're told. So it's not just about believing. It's about putting it into action, living the righteous life. But we cannot do it without you, dear God. We're asking you, Lord, to take charge of us continually. We need you. We need the Holy Spirit in our lives. I need him, God. But I can see sometimes where I am weak. Not that I, I give in to sin, but you feel a weakness come over you. So, Father in heaven, anoint us with your Holy Spirit. Us that are here on the line and others who could not be here, dear God. Oh, but the whole prayer retreat, dear God. Anoint us with your Holy Spirit and help us to surrender daily. So that we may be saved, but not just us, we may help others to be saved too. So we thank you for what you've done for us, what you're doing for us, and what you're going to do for us as we feed upon the bread of life. We thank you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. 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 I have to go, ladies. Um, All right. Okay. Thank you so much, Sister Friend. Pleasure. Have, Take care. You have a blessed day. Bye for now. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye, Sister Friend. Okay, we will continue. We will go on to our prayers now. Um, I have uh, praise and thanksgiving. I have Psalm 81, verse 1 to 3. Anyone to take that one up for us, please? I'll take that, please. Okay, thank you, Sister Stole. You can you can take use any verse that you like. And then um, confession and the church. I have Psalm 94, verse 1 to 4. There's only three of us. I'll take that one. And then um, the Holy Spirit and Evangelism, John 20, verse 20. Samson, is that uh, Sister Mugabe? Yeah, it's Irene. Oh, is that Sister Mugabe? No, it's Irene. Irene. Oh, okay. <laughs> Hello, Irene. Thanks for joining us. Okay, so our order of prayer is, um, and you can use any verse that you like. Praise and thanksgiving, Sister Stolle, uh, Confession and the Church, myself, and then the Holy Spirit and Evangelism is Sister Irene. Okay. Which scripture, which scripture did you give me? Uh, John 20, verse 22. Okay. All right, then. Okay. We, we can start with our prayers. Um, starting with the prayer of thanksgiving, praise and thanksgiving. I read in your hearing Psalm 81, verses 1 to 3. Sing aloud unto God our strength. Make a joyful noise unto the God of Jacob. Take a psalm and bring hither the timbrel and pleasant harp with psaltery. Blow up the trumpet in the new moon, in the time appointed on our solemn feast, feast day. Amen. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. Let us continue in prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. May your kingdom come. Father, thank you for the gift of life. You have allowed my sisters and I to come once again at the foot of your cross, to hear your word, to listen to the lesser light that you inspired through the Holy Spirit, your servant, 
podcast, the light helping us to understand, internalize your word. Thank you, Father, for allowing us this time and that people were able to take time out of their busy schedule. And thank you for the maid servant who is taking time to prepare and lead out in the reading. And all the, my sisters who are here, Father, Sister Fran, who is just left, Sister Rhoda and Sister Irene, that you've taken the time to come and hear your word. Lord, you are a father who loves without giving any reason. The one who suffers none of his to be lost. And you have made provision for us. For oh, our physical needs, the roof of our head, clothes on our backs, and food on our table. But more importantly, Father, you make you have made provision for us to find the character transformation that is required for those that want to spend eternity with you. Thank you for your word, which is the, the sword of the spirit, which is the manual by which we, want, we, we, live, we ought to live by if we indeed want to be called the children of God. And thank you for the gift of and privilege of prayer, the time that we are spending, you are allowing us to spend mornings, you, you, you have made provision for us to meet in the mornings right through the day in 365 days, days a year, Lord. Thank you that you have made all these provisions. And Lord, help us to take our salvation with fear and trembling. As this word touches our hearts, Father, we ask, best of all, to take away our wicked and sin-colored hearts and renew the right spirit within us. Not only us who are gathered here today, all your people that come, that have ever logged in on this, on this, on this prayer line, and even those that, some, that have fallen off, Lord, Thank you for that you have touched them, that they know where the truth is. And thank you that we know what the truth is, that we are not going to get into, into heaven by a show of a form of, of godliness. But we have to allow the Lord, the Holy Spirit, to clothe us with the robe of Christ's righteousness. Thank you that our, our Lord, our Redeemer, is one who is who knows what we went through because he lived this life as it is says as it is said in hebrews uh hebrews 3 uh, 4 verse 15 for we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our iniquities but was in all points tempted like as we are yet without sin therefore let us come boldly unto the throne of, of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Father, all of us are in need of your grace. Help us to be to, to use the opportunities that you have given, you have provided us. Last night we all went to bed, but many did not wake up. And therefore, let us see that it is your grace that we are here and nothing is your word. The chapter we were reading here, it has nothing to do with what we have done because we are incapable of pleasing you if we do not have faith in you. Thank you that you have made available your spirit for those that wish to enter the kingdom of heaven, to seek him and to seek him daily. And thank you, Father, for just who you are, the one who loves infinitely, the one who is gracious, kind, but also just. And you have given us the example of the life of Christ on this earth for us to know how it is we ought to live if we want to be called children of God. In that, Father, I want to thank you for 
having your door open that we can bring all our requests and all our troubles and all our praises to you. Lord, your, your, your ear is not, is not deaf, that you cannot hear our cries for help and our praises in worship. And your hand is not shortened, that you will not, you will not save. Thank you for this afternoon and for all the, my friends, my sisters uh, who are gathered here today. Thank you for holding the airwaves and thank you for this special prayer line where the present truth is preached, Lord, without fear or favor, in spirit and in truth. Help us to continue seeking to the end until you come again. This is my humble prayer in the precious name of Messiah, Yeshua. Amen. Amen. Shall we continue in prayer for confession in the church? Psalm 94, verse 1 to 4 says, O Lord God, to whom vengeance belongeth, O God, to whom vengeance belongeth, show thyself. Lift up thyself, thou judge of the earth, render a reward to the proud. Lord, how long shall the wicked, how long shall the wicked triumph? How long shall they utter and speak hard things and all the workers of iniquity boast themselves? May the Lord add a blessing upon his word. Father in heaven, you are the revenger of, of us all. And we pray for the church now. We see what is happening in the church from the general conference right down to each and every one of us. We are fighting among ourselves. The enemy is within more than it is without. This is your church and it will stand. No matter what we are going through at this time, we see one church after another. There is a lot of problems in there uh, between the pastor and the congregation and between the congregations on their own. People are going their own way, divorcing one another and so many things that are happening in the church. We are so sinful, Lord, and we come to you to ask you to give us pardon, to forgive us for our sinful ways. As we continue, dear Lord, day in, day out, may we listen to your still for small voice, drawing us back to the foot of the cross. And Lord, the, um, we want to bring the church to you as, as a whole. We bring ourselves as uh, we have sinned and fall short of your glory. Daily, dear Lord, we are falling away from your commandments please bring us back again to the foot of the cross that you may forgive us for our sinful ways We're, uh, not only ourselves our families our church group our even this prayer group lord sometimes we uh, say the wrong things to one another and to offend one another but when we come to you, we know that you will forgive us for our sinful ways. So this afternoon, dear Father, I want to bring us all to the foot of the cross that you may forgive us. In Jesus' name I pray and thank you. Amen. Let's pray. Our Father and our God. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Israel, and we thank you for being our God. As we come before you this afternoon, we thank you for your love, for your goodness, and your marvelous grace. Oh, how excellent is thy name, Lord, in us, our Lord. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for this special time you have given to us. We would manage us to come boldly for the throne of grace that we may obtain in mercy. Lord, as we come before you, I want to thank you for my sister's petition, which have gone before, Lord, I know, because you promised us that even before we call, you will answer. So I want to thank you, Lord, for all the answered prayers, Lord. Heavenly Father, as we come before you, we acknowledge our sinful wicked ways. We thank you for the devotion we had this afternoon. We realize, Lord, that we are a place without you. There is nothing in our power which can do anything good. So as we come before you, we totally surrender ourselves in your hands, asking you, Lord, to take out anything that is done like you in our lives. Cleanse us from all unwantedness. Wash us whiter than snow that special tongue blood, Lord Jesus, which you shed on Calvary's cross. 
Mother ship us into the people of humans from the ground, and as you make us clean, this is God, feed us with your Holy Spirit. We come before you, realizing, Lord, that there is no help out there. It's only you who can help us. Forgive our little faith, forgive our unbelief, and Lord, we ask you to hold us tight in your bosom. We realize the seriousness of the time we are living in, Lord Jesus. The time is first spent. And your coming is nearer than you can even imagine, Lord Jesus. But as your church, and as your people, we ask you to prepare us. Help us to be ready, Lord. There is not no time to, to get ready, but help us to be ready in each each moment, each minute, each each hour, Lord. Help us to be ready. And if our time comes, Lord, we will hear you calling us home, Lord. I want to thank you, Lord. For the families represented here, and we we'll pray for our brothers and sisters who would love to be here this afternoon, but they couldn't make it, Lord. I pray Lord, that you visit them, visit all the families, Lord. We have so many challenges in our families, but you know, Lord, you are the creator of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for you? So, Lord, I commit all our families, I commit ourselves. We we'll commit our church in a very special way as a church. Lord, we we'll commit ourselves to you, Lord. Feed us with your Holy Spirit so that we'll be able to go out there and do your work. We can't do your work in our own strength, but Lord, teach us to totally depend upon you so that we can be living testimony to our families, to our neighbors. And Lord, we'll be able to help others. As we get ready, we'll be able to help others to be ready. I thank you for my sisters. I thank you for the clearly treat ministry. Lord. Continue to bless it in a very special way. Continue to bless all the programs. We thank you for all those who are keeping this ministry upholding, Lord, who keep it going, Lord. Continue to bless them with knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. And Lord, continue to be with us in a very special way. We ask you for in feeding of the Holy Spirit, Lord so that we will be living testimonies for you in these last days. We thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Oh, I missed Amen. you. I didn't, sorry, I didn't read my 